A spider that was recorded catching and eating a bat in an attic has experts warning about invasive alien species. Well, not like aliens from Mars, but it might as well be. Well, that's what the Study Finds guy is here for at Study Finds, where we invite you to like and subscribe to get the latest information. So, bigger isn't always better when it comes to nature, now is it? Astounding research... Astounding? <laughs> How about scary, gross, and watch your small pets? This astounding research has documented the first ever instance of a noble false widow spider actually catching and eating a bat. Moreover, the specific variety of pipistrel bat seen in the spider's web is considered a protected species in the United Kingdom, providing further evidence that false widow spiders are impacting various native species populations. This is the first time a member of this spider family has been recorded eating a bat anywhere on Earth, or any vertebrate in Britain for that matter. Moreover, this study also marks the first time ever any species of false widow spider has been recorded preying on and eating a mammal. Well, he prayed before dinner, right? He can't be that bad. <laughs> oh God, thank you for delivering me this fine feast in thy mercy. So, where did the spider's big feast take place? Wildlife artist Ben Wadham's home in North Shropshire, England. For two days in a row, Mr. Wadham found bats living in his attic caught in the spider's web. The first bat was only a baby and completely immobilized due to its limbs being pinned tightly to its torso by the silk. The bat was dead, discolored, and shriveled from the spider slowly feeding on the remains. <laughs> wow, that took a dark turn. The second bat was a much larger adult and ultimately rescued by Mr. Wadham before the spider could begin eating. You go, Mr. Wadham. Dr. Michael Dugan in NUI Galway's Ryan Institute tells us how the spider was very tricky the way it trapped the critter. Uh, we actually understood very quickly that this was a first. What's very interesting here is that the spider actually set its web just below the bat roost. And so young bats that are trying to fly uh, have that possibility to fall on that web. And then the spider, which is actually quite small in size, produced that extremely strong web and managed to hoist so this prey that is several hundred times its own weight and then wrap it in silk so it is preserved from any kind of other predators and then bites it, injects it with venom and start to consume it. I love it that the fine folks in Galway added the captions. <laughs> My wife and I were in Ireland a few years ago and I had to tell her, uh, that's English they're speaking, dear. Dugan says that the spiders, now more prevalent in Ireland and Britain, have been capturing and feeding on snakes and lizards. Those kind of observations are actually essential to our understanding of the noble false widow, which is an invasive species. We already observed this species of spider feeding on the native and protected uh, viviparous lizard, which is the only species of reptiles we have in Ireland. Now to actually notice that those spiders are capable of feeding on fairly large mammals as well is a very important discovery because it shows once again their disruptive potential in this habitat habitats where they do not belong. Creepy crawly long-legged jerks. <laughs> oh, he didn't say that? On a side note, not Dr. Dugan, but the very friendly folks in Ireland, and they are very friendly, have a very comically casual relationship with the universal adjective or F word. <laughs> we were walking to a castle tour and this guy walks by and says to us, fuck all that stuff up there and join me in the pub for a Guinness. <laughs> well, at 9 a.m. we just thought we'd walk by and maybe catch him later. <laughs> That's a true story. Anywho, well, enough about me. There's much more detail in the link in the description below on this and other studies at studyfinds.com.